I feel like the, the work lives that we have both led in very different ways involve a lot of isolation, like sort of emotional isolation. And now here we are truly isolated. And yet I think I feel so much more connected in so many ways. I think, you know, yes, because of the time, because of this impulse, but also because we have now a moment to reach out and reach in. And I feel like a lot of things are coming together that wouldn't have come together if we were still running around like chickens with our heads cut off. Yeah. I mean, I, I totally agree. I think in a lot of ways, except for the whole like not performing thing. I mean, I think that we're all having a hard time with that. But other than that, I think in a lot of ways, our lifestyles have kind of perfectly situated us for this because all of us are on the road so much that we are relishing the time at home. And then it's like you said, there's these opportunities to work with people that usually you're both like, yeah. you know, and you're like, okay, so uh, 2024. <laughs> like, what are we making of this time? And what are we making in this time? I really am wondering how all of this will inform our practice when we do get back out on a stage. You know, we, we kind of there's like an intimacy and um, I don't know about you, but I feel also so, uh, willing to be completely real and, you know, and have the dog walk through the video and, you know, all these things that all the trappings having gone away. So what does that feel like the next time that, you know, there is a stage manager and they do say five minutes to curtain, you know, and you walk out and there's lights. I, it's going to be, it's going to feel different. I mean, I, I lost that long ago <laughs> <laughs> because I play the banjo. Uh, <laughs> And there's no need for perfection uh, <laughs> when you're a bench player. No, I mean, seriously, though, when I entered the folk world, you know, that was kind of my first lesson and what I had to let go. You know, uh, it's, al it's too, it's almost too relaxed now. <laughs> it's like, you're like, wait, I have to wear pants? <laughs> exactly. It's like, oh, like, because we did it. We actually did a couple of gigs for the first time a couple of weeks oh, ago. Yeah, we did. Yeah. A couple of in-person gigs, myself and Francesco, my partner, and you're kind of like getting ready for the show, and you're like, oh, God, I have to sell it. Oh, God, like, have we gone over the, oh, I can't just, like, read the words off my phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we have to, like, present to people, you know. Can we talk about Silk Road and what that means for you and, and the world of um, <laughs> of music? Because I think it's it's a huge transition. It's a huge statement about, you know, what cultural leadership means and and who's going to tell stories and what the stories are going to be. When Yo-Yo Ma started Silk Road, that was that was revolutionary. Take, that know, kind of um, humanitarian cultural exchange approach to music making. It's huge. Huge. And now, yeah. I mean, I think we are. It is a different time. It is a different place. And the meaning of cultural exchange continues yeah. to broaden, hopefully. Bringing me on, obviously, is a bit of a change. <laughs> um, but I think it's a great opportunity to kind of just like, all right, where is Silk Road 20 years on? You know, what it is the Silk Road stands for and to, you know, maybe present a slightly different face to the world, a little bit more. I mean, I'd love to, I want to connect more of the history of the United States to what Silk Road does because there's, I mean, the global aspect of what America is. And I love that, actually. I mean, that's... I mean, something that we share, the, the idea of being able to, you know, cross cross paths and, and across boundaries and, you know, the the variety keeps, I think, keeps our brains nimble, I think, yes. <laughs> you know. And, and exhausted. <laughs> That's the other side of the coin, yes. Because, yeah. like, as you know, we had to kind of find that ourselves because there was no path. So, so we're, like, taking a machete and we're, like, hacking through the jungle looking for a path that's not there so we have to create one so that means that people behind us can maybe step on that path there are, are people who gave us opportunities as we were hacking our way who were like here here's a new machete great thanks we still had to figure out our path but they gave us a tool well i mean i i think that's the beauty that i see in this moment which i you know it's it's been such a, a tragic year in so many ways right and this this impulse to re-examine our history is coming out of a, a state of emergency, right? But it's also such a beautiful opportunity to focus exactly on stories as a healing space. And I remember really well, do you remember in Boston, um, when we were in Boston last year and we were all in the lobby of the hotel after the concert, mm -hmm. big concert mm -hmm. at Symphony Hall where we had done all music by black composers, like writ large, right, all over the spectrum. And we were all giddy and tired and happy. And we were talking about how presenting the music in that 
traditional, historically very, very white space, in a spirit of generosity, in a spirit mm -hmm. of saying, these are the stories that no one, that you miss. These are the stories that you didn't get to know. These are the stories that fill in the blanks, that connect us, that connect you. Um, that I, that will re always stay with me because I think that, um, you know, there's so much fear right now. There's so much feeling of like guilt and shame. And instead for us to offer these stories as a connecting healing. Yeah. I mean, I think cool. that's the only way to do it. It's like uh, when I started with the Carolina chocolate drops, you know, we were it was a very different you know, the, the, the atmosphere was very different and we were coming into, a, you know, it's slowly changed a bit by bit, you know, over the last like, you know, 30, 40 years, but we were kind of came in at a moment. We're still pretty firmly like banjos white, like, what are y'all even doing here? What's going on? And what we discovered was just presenting things in a very like, look, we didn't know this either. Here we go. Isn't this exciting? Isn't this cool? This is not taking away from you. This is adding to you. This is adding to what you know. And that approach, I feel like, has uh, has served me well ever since. And I've kind of adapted it to everything going forward. It's like it's not starting off the the evening with this is what you did. It's like look, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. and people respond to that in a very positive way, you know. It's what teaching should be. I mean, I keep wondering out of this time, what happens to, you know, history books? What, how many years does it take before children in school are learning a different version of the history? And, and, and what does that mean, you know, to grow up American and know the truth of this history and not, you know, believe that the pilgrims came here and had a party with you know, <laughs> the native people, right? But to know the truth of it, doesn't it just make us stronger and healthier and like able to carry forward? There's been a very good job done on people to believe that you're taking away their, you know, well, oh, we don't have the banjo anymore. No, <laughs> you have the banjo too. <laughs> there are two you know? banjos. One that, one uh, yeah, everybody, everybody, it's like Oprah. Every, you get a banjo, you yeah. get a banjo, everybody gets a banjo, you know, because it's like every banjo is everywhere. It's like the quintessential yeah. American instrument. It went everywhere. There was a moment, I will admit that there was a moment, you know, back in April when I thought, well, maybe it's all, maybe it's all done. Maybe, you know, I don't perform anymore. Maybe, you know, the world is actually shut down forever. And I had to think about what I've done so far. And, you know, I, I realized that there are some things to be really proud of and I'll, just happy to leave behind. And I think, mm -hmm. I mean, the central part of that, and God knows, you know, you've done it. You could, you could hang up your banjo today, but, you know, to leave those stories out there, to know that the music that we've made, that like rectify some things and clarify some things Liz. Yeah. I mean, that's all you can hope for is like one person who decided to do X, Y, Z because of what we do, you know? And I think, you know, there's a whole new chapter coming and we have to keep telling the stories. There is a chance of a great spiritual awakening. If we can find that path, that is the path of kindness and inclusion. Um, cause it's very easy to go down the other path of fear and exclusion. That's where art I think comes in is that we need to lead that, lead the way down that path, you know, however we can. Um, we'll you know. keep at it. You can always use my machete. <laughs> you know, you got, I got one for you too. So <laughs> sharpening it. <laughs>